Ladies and gentlemen, let me now turn to the next speaker, Nitin Gokhal, who is a senior defense analyst from India, a very experienced analyst, and he has also lectured at many defense schools, including India's two, the two premier schools for intelligence, the schools of the external intelligence service, research and analysis wing, and the intelligence bureau. So let me now invite Nitin Gokhal to present. Uh, you are given 15 minutes, please. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you, Professor Gunaratne. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, the hosts, first of all, let me uh, thank all of you uh, for uh, inviting me and giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts on uh, the new normal and the security, stability, and national development. The theme, uh, which is, I think, uh, very well curated and uh, perhaps chosen with a lot of deliberation. I think it's a very apt, very relevant um, presentation uh, that you have asked for from um, many experts around the world. I was listening very keenly to uh, Sri Lanka's uh, Defense Secretary, as well as um, the uh, chief guest, uh, the uh, principal advisor to the president of Sri Lanka. And I think uh, the International Research Conference of uh, the KDU, uh, I, I'm, I believe this is the 14th edition of the International Research Conference, which uh, shows how keenly the KDU uh, pursues its uh, uh, main mandate for research uh, for on defense and security matters. So in that context, uh, let me say this, that uh, certainly the new normal, of course, has been uh, for the last 18 months now from March 2020 in this region, especially in South Asia. Uh, COVID-19 uh, hit us uh, from March 20, uh, February, February or March uh, 2020 and has given us a completely new perspective on life, on national development, on national security, and uh, has become a new normal, certainly. So uh, what has it done? It is first, uh, first and foremost, it has uh, destabilized the equilibrium in uh, national development and in national strategies. If uh, health was not a priority in uh, pre-2020 uh, days, pre-March 2020 days, it has now become uh, a most crucial sector to look at for governments, which means it will have to, all the governments uh, across the world will have to reprioritize, reallocate resources uh, from uh, other sectors for health and uh, the mitigation of uh, such pandemics. I uh, remember, in fact, it was in Colombo two years ago, not uh, exactly two years ago, in fact, uh, in August 2019, when I was speaking uh, as the keynote speaker of the Colombo Defense Seminar. And uh, I was mentioning that uh, the new security challenges uh, to uh, armed forces, and that time it was the pre predominantly uh, armed forces audience, I was saying that uh, it is no longer going to be uh, the long big wars or uh, kinetic wars, but challenges coming from uh, asymmetric threats, uh, including pandemics. Who knew that in six months, the pandemic will really hit us uh, the way it has hit us across the globe and especially in South Asia. So uh, I think uh, the reprioritization of national objectives uh, is the first uh, step that governments uh, have taken or will take uh, as they realize that um, allocating money only to defense and security, hard power uh, platforms, defense platforms will not be sufficient. While they are necessary, they will not be sufficient because health infrastructure will have to be improved. Uh, the uh, sanitation, uh, the uh, effort to elevate poverty in a region like ours in South Asia will have to be redoubled. And that will mean a lot of changes to the way uh, the militaries function. Uh, many governments, uh, including uh, that of Sri Lanka, uh, have uh, utilized uh, the military for uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, mitigation. In fact, uh, if I'm uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the entire uh, task of uh, COVID-19 mitigation in Sri Lanka is handled and headed by the military and the security uh, segment of the government. Uh, the army commander or the commander in the um, chief of defense staff. Uh, who's uh, heading this task force. Uh, they are the ones who are uh, laying down rules, regulations uh, for uh, given reasons. In India too, the military played all the three uh, arms of the uh, services. The three services played very big role in uh, trying to uh, help 
the common citizens in terms of transporting oxygen, uh, uh, raising hospitals, field hospitals, and many other things that the uh, military has done, evacuating uh, Indians from across the world, bringing in oxygen gen generators, giving aid, uh, medical aid to many of our friends in the region was done by the military. So the governments uh, have had to reprioritize uh, its uh, their objectives of uh, various plans and projects uh, and uh, also think out of the box in uh, how to now uh, give uh, money to uh, various sectors. So, uh, of course, it has led to many other uh, unintended consequences. The economies have slowed down, slowed down everywhere. Even uh, in a country like India, which is supposed to be the third largest economy and uh, the fastest growing economy across the world, has had to uh, now uh, look at the uh, after effects of pandemic on majority of its population. Uh, internal migration has taken place, job losses have happened, and uh, big tech uh, has suddenly become, uh, in a way, uh, some kind of a threat because of the rapid spread of disinformation, misinformation, misuse of big tech, uh, especially the social media platforms. All that has happened. So therefore, uh, the, uh, the challenge in the new normal uh, for uh, national development is going to be about balancing the need for economic development and uh, also giving uh, the needed wherewithal to the armed forces. Now, how, does, uh, how do small countries like uh, Sri Lanka uh, or uh, Bangladesh or uh, even Maldives and Seychelles handle this? Because uh, the severe impact of COVID on the economy has meant uh, low incomes, uh, low revenue and uh, you know, countries staring at uh, bankruptcies emergencies, food emergencies like it has happened in Sri Lanka. Now that new normal parameter or the framework will mean, as I mentioned, uh, reassessing the national objectives, uh, reassessing uh, what uh, should be the first priority. Should it be uh, the health ministry or should it be the employment generation ministries or employment generation for uh, the, young, the youth of uh, each country? All that uh, has come into question. But the old challenges haven't gone away. I think my, uh, the previous speaker referred uh, quite a bit uh, to Afghanistan. Now, Afghanistan has created uh, problems of its own uh, for every country in the region. In fact, uh, just yesterday, India was hosting uh, the chief of the CIA, as well as the national security advisor of uh, Russia with his delegation. Uh, and the previous week, the chief of the MI6 the British Secret Service uh, was in uh, New Delhi. Now, uh, that uh, has sort of propelled many nations to again rethink, reassess uh, what should be their approach to Afghanistan, what is going to be the fallout uh, on uh, the uh, nations in the region. Will it lead to radicalism? Will it lead to uh, more Islam, uh, more extremism? Uh, Sri Lanka, India have been victims of uh, that. Uh, radicalism, the Islamic radical uh, movements and uh, terror terrorism. So all that has become uh, the, uh, the churning that has happened uh, within governments everywhere. In fact, uh, India, Sri Lanka and Maldives are engaged in uh, what is called the Colombo security uh, conclave, uh, which is the a trilateral maritime security uh, platform, uh, which also is going to likely include Bangladesh, Seychelles and Mauritius in uh, the next editions. Now, that is an interesting part. Just about, I think a month ago, the uh, conclave had a meeting in uh, virtually and before that uh, meeting in Colombo, where they have decided to work in uh, four specific areas, which are going to be the big challenge. There may not be a big war in the region, but these challenges are perpetual. And uh, this is a fallout of the new normal, the pandemic uh, after effects in many cases because of increased uh, economic uh, hardships that people are going to face will lead to more and more uh, maybe uh, disgruntled youths joining uh, these uh, terrorist organizations, uh, the radical organizations. So the four areas that the uh, three governments uh, have decided to focus on are extremely important for this region. They are maritime safety and security, terrorism and radicalization, trafficking and organized crime, and cybersecurity. As we get more and more connected, 
the cyber security has become important because uh, today uh, almost every corner of the world is interconnected uh, through uh, the internet and through uh, the proliferation of uh, mobile phones and uh, the new technology. Now, how do you keep uh, each of the infrastructure safe, your banking, your um, railways infrastructure, your civil aviation, all that uh, will continue. It is only added to the problems of uh, maintaining security in, in, the, uh, in the countries that are vulnerable. Uh, of course, climate change is the other uh, unknown, uh, known unknown, I would say, in, uh, in the way we are going to go forward to look at security. So what do the new normal uh, bring in uh, as far as the challenges are concerned? I think reorientation of uh, security policies uh, in view of the change situation will be uh, done uh, across the countries, across uh, the military forces uh, in the region. And uh, the South Asian region particularly has two unique uh, challenges which are not uh, present in uh, any part, any other part of the, uh, of the world, is the uh, internal migration uh, and the large populations that uh, the countries have to take care of. Look at India. 50% of India's population by 2030 is likely to be urbanized, which will bring in its own challenges. The, the internal migration that is happening is uh, perhaps the largest in mankind's history uh, in terms of uh, people moving from rural areas to uh, the uh, urban areas. It will bring in its own challenges for uh, governance. Same thing uh, is probably uh, facing Bangladesh today. It may not be so in Sri Lanka uh, because of its uh, unique um, population to land ratio and uh, you know, the kind of development that Sri Lanka has seen over the past so many years. But big countries, big population will face uh, several challenges that are not present in other countries. Similarly, radicalization is ever present in uh, South Asia. And uh, the final point I want to make is the, uh, the challenge that China brings. I think it's been spoken at uh, various places. China's uh, aggressive behavior, its belligerence, its deep pockets are turning out to be uh, a threat to smaller countries and bigger countries as well. Today, uh, China doesn't have a friend uh, beyond uh, two and a half uh, countries, I would say. North Korea, Pakistan, and maybe half a country, Afghanistan, because they are now uh, trying to be friendly with Taliban. All other countries are wary of China's belligerence, aggressiveness, its uh, ability or uh, desire to try and dominate uh, each of these uh, uh, you know, uh, fields, technology, uh, scientific uh, advances, and uh, the border issues it has with uh, countries like India, uh, the trade issues it has with uh, the United States. It is actually uh, making people come together. Quad is one example. It, it is not yet militarized. But uh, that is the other issue. In South Asia, uh, the contest between India and China is sucking in smaller countries. Sri Lanka is a prime example. Maldives is another. Bangladesh uh, could be the third uh, example in coming years. So that challenge, again, uh, is uh, part of the new normal. Because China has deeper pockets, China has managed to uh, do the COVID mitigation far better than uh, every other country, uh, it, it will continue to push its own agenda, uh, which the countries will have to be wary of. So the final point I want to make is in the new normal, nothing is predictable. Who had thought, who would have thought this pandemic uh, would slow down, shut down, lock down uh, the world as we have never seen. So today it's uh, very difficult to predict what the future holds. Uh, but uh, the fact is we are here. We are uh, faced with it. And the only way to do it is to face the challenge head on and uh, evolve strategies, both for national development as well as national security, uh, hand in hand and parallelly. I'd like to end here and again thank uh, the organizers of, uh, in the KDU for giving me this opportunity to speak virtually. I would love to have come uh, to Colombo as uh, many friends uh, may be in the audience and maybe uh, virtually uh, listening to me know that uh, I have uh, been to Sri Lanka so many times and I have so many friends there that it would have been lovely to be there in amidst you uh, physically but since that is not possible that's the fallout of the pandemic uh, this was the second best way to do it.
thanks again for this opportunity and thank you very much have a great day thank you nitin kdu thanks you for your comprehensive wide ranging presentation would like to specifically highlight something you said that the challenge of social media so i think that for any country today for any government administration to survive its term it must have huge social media firepower otherwise it will be hijacked and dominated by other parties thank you once again for highlighting those issues